Hi, I'm Chris from Budget Shipping Containers and in this video we're going to show you a one-trip shipping container. We're also going to show you the main features and what to expect if you're going to buy one of these from us. First things first, let's explain what is a one-trip shipping container. So this container was brand new in the factory in China a few months ago. It's been shipped to the UK with some freight inside. This means it's done one trip, hence it's a one trip container. It's important to mention, you should expect a couple of knocks from its first trip over to the UK. In this instance, we've got a couple of little paint scrapes along the sides. There's also some more paint scrapes on the end frames where the port equipment's touched it. This is very common to see. Inside this particular one, there's also a tiny bit of evidence of where a forklift has been inside to unload or load some cargo. Over on the side here, we've got the container number. This is made up of four letters ending in a U, followed by seven numbers. This will appear in the top right hand corner of every external panel on your container. Here we also have the ISO or ISO code. This tells us the length, the height and the configuration of the container at a glance. Along the sides you can see you've got a smooth, plain green exterior. We generally offer our one trip containers in both green and blue, but most important, virtually dent free, virtually scrape free, and it's a smart, neat, good looking unit. At the bottom here, we've got two large forklift pockets, which are great for empty lifts. It's worth mentioning 40 foot containers generally don't come with forklift pockets anymore. 10 foot and 20 foot containers will. Right at the top here, we've got a number of small cargo vents. These are about an inch square and they're covered with mesh to stop bugs getting in and out. On a basic configuration container, there may only be two or four of these vents. However, we're seeing ranges with up to 16 and maybe even more vents come in these days. Our top tip with relation to vents is that these vents are very small, they're covered with mesh, and they won't allow for a fantastic level of airflow. If you want airflow through your container, we do recommend having some additional louver vents. We can fit these in our depots for you, or we can send them out to you to fit on site. Down at the door end of the container, first thing to note, we've got these four large vertical locking bars and four handles on the door of your container. It's worth mentioning that some versions of One Trip Container now are coming with a single locking bar on the right hand door. This will be a bit thicker and it will have a slightly longer handle and it's marketed as an easy open door option. I will say, personally, whichever door configuration you get, if your container is level and set up properly, it's going to be relatively easy to open the door regardless of the door type. Moving on, we can see we've got the container number again right at the top of the doors and your ISO code. And further down, you've got some basic loading information. So this is the maximum gross weight. This is the maximum weight it's safe to lift your container and cargo weights together. This is the tear weight, the empty weight of your container. Your maximum payload weight is your maximum weight of cargo going inside your payload plus your tear will equal your max gross. And then finally you've got your cubic capacity underneath. You've also got heavy duty lock box on the door, which is a padlock cover. These come as standard on all one trip containers, but they are an extra option on all used containers. They're really important and strongly recommended if you need your container to be secure. Then finally, down at this corner, we've got a little metal CSC plate or data plate for your container. This will tell us a lot of technical information about your container, uh, including the container number, date of birth, the next examination date if it's going to be sent for export, it's got your maximum cargo weights on as well, and a lot of other handy information for us. Top tip for you, if you're going to export your container, I'm going to strongly recommend to get a close-up photo of this before you send it for export. The main reason being is a lot of shipping lines ask for some of this information from the data plate, but currently a lot of them are asking for it a bit late, possibly after it's left your site, so it can save you a big headache if you've got that information on file. So opening the doors is dead easy. It's always the right hand door that will open first on any shipping container. First thing to mention, if you've got two locking bars on your right hand door, it's always going to be the inner locking bar that does most of the work first and the outer one finishes off the job. Take your catches, take both handles, open with the centre, then open with the edge. On the left hand side, it's exactly the same process again. The centre locking bar will do most of the work, outer one help you get it finished off.
Now we're inside the container. First thing worth mentioning is the height of the internal floor. So this can vary slightly between one container and the next, but you've got four to five inches between your external floor line and your internal floor on your shipping container. Beyond that, we also recommend to keep your container supported on its four base corners and raised slightly off the ground. If you keep it level, the doors will work best. If you raise it slightly off the ground, it'll mean the underside dries out faster between wet spells and that will give you your best possible lifespan on the container. Just inside, you've got a circa inch thick marine treated plywood floor. These are made from tropical plywoods, although we're seeing more bamboo coming through in the marketplace, which is widely considered a lot more environmentally friendly. These plywood floors sit on top of a load of steel cross members means for storage use, you're not going to have any problems loading very large weights inside. So inside the container, we can see along the top rails and the bottom rails, we've got five cargo lashing points along each top and bottom rail on the left and right side of the container. You've also got three lashing points at these front end corner posts. As well as that, you can see the inside of the cargo vents going along the sides of the container. So to sum up, in short, a one-trip container is a smart, neat, good-looking unit. It will last a very long time, but also hold a very good resale value if you wanted to sell it off in 10 plus years time. Thanks very much for watching. This is all for today. If you'd like to give us a subscribe and a follow, we very much appreciate that.